The following is a sponsored program paid for by Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, Remax Results. Welcome to Rochester Real Estate, featuring Robin Gwaltney from Gwaltney Group, Remax Results, and Andy Brownell. Here's Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk, 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Good morning. Andy Brownell with you, along with Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, Remax Results. It's Saturday morning, and we're ready to talk about real estate in the Rochester area. Does uh, the return of football on the weekends affect <laughs> real estate? <laughs> yeah, you see more wives at the open houses? Is that what you're getting at? <laughs> or, or having to schedule open houses around yeah. no, we really do wanting that. to watch their games? Yeah, we do that. And the thing about Rochester, though, is, you know, so many people moved here from other places that it's not like everybody in Rochester are Minnesota Vikings fans, right? Sure. There's a lot of people that like lots of different teams. <laughs> so the diehard football fans are not coming to open houses on Sundays. So then maybe um, we'll prefer to do them on Saturday. But then there's those college football yeah, games. And then there's the thinking. kids' soccer games. And, you know, so bottom line is that's what's really nice about the fact that if they can't get to the open house, they can always just simply call us, and whenever whatever day and time does work for a showing, we make it happen. So, but we do have eleven of our listings are going to be held open between today and tomorrow. So we have quite oh, wow. a few open houses. Yeah. So our our agents are fired up. I mean, they are ready to finish this year strong. You know, go into this last quarter with all kinds of energy and positive energy. I mean, it's been. So much fun to be around our office lately. It's been a lot of fun. Awesome. So, yeah. So for the buyer, is there is there a better way? I mean, is it better for me to go to the open house? Or is you it know, better for me to make that private appointment to have a... Either service? way, you know, sometimes, um, sometimes people feel like if they've called the realtor... You know, they're inconveniencing us or they should expect to spend, you know, 20 to 30 minutes there looking at the property. If they come to an open house, they come in and oftentimes in five minutes they're in and out because they know it's not the right fit. But the truth be told, even when we're out showing people houses, we don't care. If they get there and it's not the house for them, out we go. It's fine. We don't want to waste their time either. So right. it's it's not a problem. But, yeah, people do like open houses. And I also, you know, I tell my team who comes to open houses often are not even buyers, but they're actually sellers. And they're people who are getting their house ready for the market. They want to come and check out the competition. Sometimes they're looking for a listing agent. And so I tell every one of my team members that, you know, be professional, be polite, answer questions because you never know when you're actually interviewing for a job for a listing. But clearly, you know, the main reason we are at an open house is we're trying to do everything in our power to help our sellers get their listings sold. And so if we can give them more exposure by holding an open house, then we are 100% all about that. Is that something you have to, I don't know, pay extra for when you enter into a contract to sell a house? Not, not with us because we are full service. And, you know, because we're such a large team, I tell people, you know, we can do an open house every single weekend if you want one. Yeah. And it's, mm. it's interesting <laughs> to me. Yeah, I know. It's in, sometimes with vacant houses, they do want them, though. You know, they're just like, open it as much as you can, get people in there. But um, it's interesting to me that when I go into a listing appointment, often... The sellers will say, well, now I interviewed so-and-so from this company, and he told me that open houses are a waste of time. And, of course, what I want to say is a waste of his time, maybe, <laughs> you know, but I don't. I, of course, I'm very professional. You know that. I just say, well, everyone has a different opinion about it. But I will tell you that I've now been selling real estate for 23 years, and open houses were how I made my start in real estate because, listen, things were not on the Internet. I think you remember right. me saying that I came into real estate right as the books, the, the monthly or weekly or whatever they published on books were going out. Thank God. But anyway... Um, so it was, if you wanted to see a house, we didn't have all these beautiful photos. 
and virtual tours. You could get the basic information, right? So if you right. really wanted to get a good feel for the house or see the house, you went to an open house. So I just made a promise to myself that I was going to take this career seriously, and I was going to schedule three open houses every Saturday. I had did one from 10.30 till noon, a second one from 12.30 till 2, and the last one was 2.30 till 4. That's a and lot of on, cookies, Robin. And then on Sundays, and then on Sundays I did two. I always did 12 to 1.30 and 2 o'clock to 3.30, and it meant missing a lot of fun activities, but I would always tell people, I have to work, I have to do open houses, and I would, you know, I didn't even have that many listings. I was a new agent, so I would just get to hold listings for other agents at Coldwell Banker at that time and just get myself out there and meet people. And boy, oh boy, it really worked for me. You know, I met so many buyers at open houses and I sold so many of the houses that I held open. I met sellers. I mean, it was really a jump start for me. So I tried to really pound it into the heads of these agents that... Believe me, you might have better things you want to do, but it's never a waste of time. You know, bring some cards with you and write handwritten thank you notes to people who have recently purchased with you or celebrating their one-year anniversary. I mean, there's always something you could do with the time if in the event that nobody does show up, right? And if people come, it's always fun to talk to the people. So I personally, to this day, 23 years later, am a firm believer uh, in open houses, of course, if the sellers want them. Sometimes sure. sellers say, I'm not at all excited about letting people just traipse through my house. So it's always up to the seller, but I've, I can tell you I've sold lots and lots of houses at open houses. So I think it's a good basic tool to continue to use. And again, Waltney Group is doing 11 open houses this weekend. So if you see any of our listings on the website, It'll tell you what day, what time today and tomorrow. You can go check them out. Yeah. And like I mentioned, if the time doesn't work for you, then you just call us and we can show you anything, anytime. This is the last weekend of the Builders Parade, too. Oh, that's it was last, right. Yeah. It was last weekend and this weekend. So a lot a of lot new of construction houses. houses. Yeah. yeah. And the fall, in the fall, the fall parade, they have to be 100% complete. So it's a lot more fun. Right. Because in the spring parade, they can just be framing it up. And, you know, it's not always that pretty to look at. But the fall parade of homes is fun. If you had a recommendation for a buyer who is going to go to a bunch of open houses, what what would you tell them to look for or ask about? As far as the Builders Parade or just normal open well, houses? I think it would be both or either. Um, okay, well, I think it, there's, there's a couple of things that matter. So if the buyer is already working with an agent, then the first thing they should do is tell the, the agent that's at the, at the open house I am currently under contract with Robin Gwaltney at Remax. I mean, my buyers know because, of course, I I teach them what they're supposed to do because some people don't do it right because they just don't know. Right. And the agent that's hosting the open house is always supposed to ask the buyers or the the lookers when they come in, you know, are you currently under contract with an agent? And if they say yes, that really limits the conversation, the questions that they can answer. So it's really more of a just look around. And if you like it enough, then call your agent to go back and then the questions will be asked at that time okay. through your agent. Now, keep in mind, even if you're not under contract with an agent, you're also not under contract with that agent hosting the open house and they are under contract with the seller. So their fiduciary duties are to work in the best interest of the seller. So I think um, you just got to be careful. Be careful. Okay. Go have a look. See, mainly see what kind of things you like or don't like, right? Right. And it's like sometimes people will go to open houses and they'll just get a feel for, oh, I like the way this neighborhood feels. So... That wasn't the right house for me, but I really know, Robin, that I want to live in this particular neighborhood. Ooh. Or, you know, I went through enough split-level homes today to know that I don't want to live in a split-level home. Or, boy, we really like those two stories where there's four bedrooms upstairs, 
all of our kids can be up there and we can be up there and all the living goes on in the main floor and lower level. So I think open houses sometimes just familiarize people with houses and the, especially the people who like to touch it, see it, feel it. You know, it's just one sure. step better than going, um, looking at it virtually online. All right. We're chatting today with Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group Remax Results. And we'll be back in just a moment on News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. We'll be right back with Robin Gwaltney and Andy Brownell on Rochester Real Estate. This is News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Welcome back to Rochester. Robin Gwaltney from Gwaltney Group, Remax Results, and Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk, 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. We're back. I'm Andy Brownell. Robin Gwaltney with, with Gwaltney Group, Remax Results with us, of course. And uh, I saw a headline, Robin, this week that read, is uh, the 7% mortgage rate the new norm, and it... I don't know why I got, I, I got angry when I read it because I it was one of those headlines that I just want to get in the face of the person who wrote it. Go, of course not. It's going to change. Of course not. It's of always not. going to change. Yeah, that would be as silly as saying, "Is two point five percent interest rate going to be the new norm?" Yeah. A few years back, everybody knew it wasn't. Everybody knew it was like this isn't going to last forever. Jump in while you can. And so now some buyers are saying, okay, I know it's going to go down, so I'll wait until I jump in. But I know I sound like mm. a broken record when I say this, but this is what happens. Let's say, I mean, right now our rates are, they're hovering pretty high up there, um, really close to 7%. I had a closing yesterday, a young guy, twenty in his 20s, I would guess, he closed at um, 6.6%. Okay. And I said, what do you think of this interest rate? He goes, I don't know. It doesn't seem too bad. And he goes, I know that if you charge on a credit card, it's three times more than that. I said, that's for sure. And I said, well, I will tell you when I got into real estate, this is about what the uh, interest rates were. And nobody ever told me that it was a negative thing or a bad thing. So as far as I was concerned, it was a great thing. And I was busy and that was in 2001 and yeah. 2002 and 2003. And the, the everything was busy. And we never heard any negative talk about interest rates in the high sixes. Ever. They were building homes like crazy during those Building years. homes like crazy. Builders were putting up rows of model homes. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, he said to me, I go, I'm so proud of you to be such a young guy and, you know, buying your first house. And he goes, well, I mean, I'm still living at home with my mom and dad and I have a good job at Mayo. And even though they don't mind that I live there, I'd still like to have a place of my own. And no way was I going to waste money on um uh, rent. He said, because if people think this is a high interest rate, what are you getting for your rent? You're just throwing it out the window. I'm like, oh my gosh, you are so bright. <laughs> so bright. And that's why this young man is buying a house, right? And he brought a check from his savings account with $40,000 to the closing table. And I said, pat yourself on the back, young man. That's so, all the money he would have been paying in rent to somebody. In no time. In no time. Yeah. So just, just thrilled for that kid. And he's like, you know, I suppose sometime that my my rates will go down and, um, you know, the rates will go down and I could probably refinance. But we'll just see. He said, because likely, because it's a small house, likely in five to seven years, I'll probably be moving anyway. I'm like, oh, my gosh, this kid listens to my show and he's That's asleep. Right. <laughs> I know he does. <laughs> But yeah, he just I, absorbed it from the airwaves. So smart, just so smart, and it just made me so happy. And you know, he's educated; he knows what he's doing, and he's putting himself in such a good position and getting off to, you know, just really off to a great start, young age. And I, I we've discussed this before. We started out at nine and a half percent, yeah, and we were happy at nine and a half percent because previously it was eleven percent, and twelve percent, and thirteen and a half percent, right, and, and then, so. We refinanced yeah. three times on the way down. Yeah, yeah. Well, and then I, I, I can tell you this: there are plenty of people out there whose rates were at five, five and a half, and when rates dropped to three or two, they didn't refinance. And I said, "Are you going to refinance?" Nah, my rate's not that bad. You know, it, it's true though. If you're down to a point where 
you paid off so much of the principal, that interest rate isn't going to affect it hugely at that point. Exactly. But my point is, is everybody's like, oh, you know, it's so, it's so high. And it's like, well, no, some people just stayed really close to this amount when they could have gone lower, but they know that in the whole scheme of things, it's not a clear picture, right? right. So I just say, again, if you find the house you like now, good God, buy the thing because if you wait for the rates to drop, because I'm promising you, they will. They will eventually drop. I don't have a crystal ball. Yep. I don't know when, but no. To answer your question, 7% is not the new normal. It is absolutely not. For a little while, I mean, it's what's it's what's real right now, but it's not going to stay that way. And when they start to drop, remember what I said: I got more more qualified buyers out there ready to pounce. Every time, this is a really interesting statistic: every time the interest rate drops by one percent, by one percent, one million buyers jump back into the game. Wow. So, now what happens? We have more competition. What happens when we have more competition? Drives the price Dr- of the drives home up. Drives the price of the home up. And then not only the listing price, but then there's the bidding wars. So, oh, I want it so bad that I'm willing to go 20 over. Well, I'll go 30 over. Well, I'll go 35. So, right now, you can go out there and you can take a few weeks look at open houses, look at everything online, call us, look at 15 homes. Look at every single thing in your price range before you make a thought out decision about what you're going to buy because you don't have to do this 30 minute pull the trigger. Like, and I'm not exaggerating when I say people that I've shown houses to have had 30 minutes to oh, decide, I, yeah, I make the decision. Do you want it or not? So this is a lot less stressful for buyers. And I mean, honestly, it's not like houses are sitting around forever and ever. The average what is that, like two market. Months now? Um, okay, so let me just take a look at this last market report. Not even two months. Um, between 100 and 200, it's 18 days. Between 200 and 300, it's 38 days. Between 300 and 400, it's 38 days. Between 400 and 500, it's 27 days. There's nothing more than 38 days on the market for average days on market. And about four years ago, when you and I started, well, four or five years ago, we started doing this. It was, the days on market were longer. Yeah. Yeah, well, definitely. Definitely, definitely. So even, not- let me even look here. Well, now I know there's not as many, but um, 900 to a million, 50 days. And the highest one, and when you get up into the high prices, the million three to a million four. That's taking five months. Yeah, because you only have so many people who are capable of purchasing that home. Especially with the rates higher because it does yeah. change the it does change the monthly payment, right? Yeah, but it, so. it's just, a, as you point out, it's just one piece of the puzzle. It is. And the thing to always focus on is the um, what is your monthly payment going to look like? Yep. So if the house is X number of dollars and the interest rate is... X percent, you meet with your your mortgage lender and you find out what's my monthly payment going to be because in the end, that's really what matters to me. Not not that number that they tell you at closing. After you've paid this interest rate at 30 years, you will have paid one million billion dollars <laughs> worth of interest and scares the crap out of people. But it's like, well, first of all, you're going to have to live here 30 years. Second of all, you're going to have to never, ever pay extra towards your mortgage. I mean, it's just a lot of ifs and buts. Yes. We have to take another break already. We're with Robin oh. Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group Remax Results. And we'll return in a moment on News Talk 1340, KROC AM at 96.9 FM. We'll be right back with Robin Gwaltney and Andy Brownell on Rochester Real Estate. This is News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Mental health challenges. Welcome back with Robin Gwaltney from Gwaltney Group, Remax Results, and Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. We're back with Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, Remax Results, our Saturday morning chat about 
real estate in southeastern Minnesota and the Rochester area. And this is the time of the program where I always ask you, Robin, if you have some listings and open houses. And I know you have open houses. Too. Oh, my gosh. So you many open it. houses. Um, all right. Let me quickly go over what we do have for open houses. Uh, today, we have... Brett is over at Sapala Court. We've got a sixplex, new uh, townhomes over there. Beautiful, beautiful townhomes. And he's holding a model open from 10 until 11.30 this morning. And that address is 5347 Sapala Court. And then after that, he's heading up to Scenic Park Place. 2325 Scenic Park Place. We've got a beauty up on the park there. It's a million fifty. Big six bed, five bath, two story, immaculate condition. He'll be there from 1130 until one o'clock. And then we have Nate is doing Fern Avenue Southeast. And he'll be there from 130 until three. Elizabeth will be holding our big, beautiful listing out at 2606 Crest Lane Southwest. That one's 975. She'll be there from 1 until 2.30. And Zach will be at 2013 23rd and a half Street from, well, he's there from 10 this morning until 11.30. And then we've got Justin over at 120135th Street. That one is 259. He's there from 1 o'clock until 2.30. And Michael is holding 2918 4th Street. That one's 699. He's there from 12.30 until 2. And we've even got an open house over in Wabasha. Megan is holding 57483 152nd Avenue, which is down on the prairie, down like where Pioneer Club, you know, down there. Yeah. Uh, and she's holding that one from 1030 until noon this morning. So uh, and then tomorrow we've got four more. So oh I mean, you can look at our website. I'm super excited. Like I said, we've been seeing good traffic at open houses and people are out there just you know, looking around for whatever reason. Sometimes it's because they're ready to buy. Sometimes it's because they're trying to become more educated about the market. But whatever the reason, obviously you're always welcome. That's why we call it an open house. For sure. So um, let's see if I have any other new listings. I think all of the new listings are most likely being held open. Makes sense. Um, yeah, I don't see any of these others that are newer. So I guess that about covers it. But again, our listing, anybody else's listing, if you're not under contract with an agent, then just call our number and we can show you anything you want to see that's listed in the MLS. We've got agents over in Wabasha. We've got an office over there with six agents. We even have an agent up in the Twin Cities. Um, he offices out of St. Paul, along with a, a whole bunch of REMAX results, people that we can refer to. Is that not Michael up there? Michael. Michael Floyd, yeah. yep. Mm -hmm. And not to mention, we can refer you to any agent anywhere and not just even in this country i actually referred somebody to an agent in costa rica and i happened to know that wow. agent because my sister lives in costa rica and i met him personally and he was just such a friendly really awesome guy and then i had somebody put on facebook does anybody know a good agent in costa rica and i'm like oh my gosh i actually do <laughs> so i mean remax has a fabulous network and when I give you a name of an agent, it's because I know that they're in the top 1% of REMAX, so they're very good at what they do, or I know them personally and know that they are super successful and, you know, have great work ethics, so we'll, we'll really work hard to find you an agent wherever you're going. I know with Rochester, a lot of people do a residency and then it's time to leave, and they don't even realize this is something that local agents can do for them, so I think it's important to say it. That is huge, Paul. By example, my daughter, we came to you and you lined yeah. her up with a great agent up in Duluth and that made that situation so much less stressful for her. Yeah, that exactly. And he said he's such a good guy. And I mean, I know him well and I knew he should be in good hands. So, yeah, I'm yeah, happy, happy to do it. Did well by her and her husband, that's for sure. Awesome. 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 All right. 
Well, I suppose this is when I tell people how to find me. Exactly. Where's that phone number? (laughs) (laughs) Well, you can always visit our website if you want to learn more about us, and that is gwaltneygroup.com. Or if you want to call me directly, my cell phone is readily available, and that number is 507-259-4926. All right, Robin, you enjoy the rest of the weekend. You do the same. And we'll chat again next week. All right, sounds great. Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group Remax Results here on News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.